satellite imagery surrounds us, from Google Maps to daily weather forecasts. But almost all of it is from a map-like top-down perspective, a view that is disconnected from our everyday experience and lacking the cues that we use to interpret the world around us. We're used to seeing things more like this view from Maxar's Worldview 3 satellite at an angle. At ground level or even from an airplane, we're not really looking straight down. So these oblique views connect our own experience with the unfamiliar view from space. And in many ways, the prevalence of nadir views is an anomaly. The first decades of aerial photography, such as this 1858 view from a balloon of Paris, and later imagery from kites and aircraft were all taken at an angle. Even the first photos from space were oblique. This panorama was acquired by a V-2 rocket launched from White Sands, New Mexico, and shows most of the Southwest United States, along with the Earth's limb, the thin veil of atmosphere that separates us from space. Astronauts and cosmonauts continue this tradition, snapping photographs through the windows of their spacecraft from the earliest orbital flights until today. This sequence of photos illustrates the structure of Sarichev Volcano's ash plume in 2009. I personally became interested in oblique views when trying to illustrate the impact of a deadly debris flow in Montecito, California. Unfortunately, that top town view eliminated the relationship between the hillsides that towered above Montecito and the debris flows themselves. But if we switch to an oblique view, we could really see the structure of the landscape and how the burn scar and the terrain funneled the debris flows through the town in a way that was very intuitive and easy to understand. So let's take a look at how oblique imagery is acquired with the help of this image of another California disaster, the Kincaid fire from late last year. To acquire this image, Planet had to operate their satellite in a way that's quite non-standard. Uh, typically, a high resolution satellite is gonna be looking near nadir, so plus or minus 30 degrees. While the highly oblique imagery is more 60 degrees and above, and that really gives you that side, sideways look at the Earth's environment. And as a result, um, you actually end up with a very extreme situation where the satellite to take a picture of Healdsburg, California was over a thousand kilometers to the east over central Utah. And let's take a closer look to compare nadir to oblique imagery with the help of this image of downtown Houston. Acquired at only 12 degrees off nadir, it's extremely high resolution, and every single feature in the image can be lined up exactly with its correct position on the surface of the Earth. Contrast that with an oblique view, which gives a great view of the structure of Houston skyline at the expense of resolution, increased interference from the atmosphere, and a lot more difficulty in acquiring and processing the image. So why bother with all that trouble? Well, for one thing, if you're looking at these extreme angles, you can do things like count the floors in a building or even see underneath a structure meant to hide prying eyes from a submarine uh, that the North Koreans have parked at the port of Sinpo. Or you can combine nadir views with off nadir views to reconstruct a 3D map of a landscape and make a 3D elevation model, a digital elevation model. And the more different angles that you combine, the more accurate the resulting map. And if you're trying to collect video from space, oblique views are inevitable. The orbital spacecraft are just moving so fast. So watch how the view of the ski soats of Breckenridge evolve as the satellite swings along its ground track. But to me, the most interesting aspect of oblique imagery is how it shows the form of a landscape. And it's the bridge between our lived experience and abstract data. So from the dramatic cascade of ancient lava flows down the slopes of the Grand Canyon to the U-shaped valleys and hanging glaciers and towering granite cliffs of Baffin Island, Canada. See if you can spot the silhouette of the Empire State Building, which I included to give you a human element of the scale of this extreme environment. Zooming in and the fractal glaciated landscape gives way to snow-covered snow -covered slopes and long shadows cast by the towering granite cliffs. The connection between what we see from the familiar ground level viewpoint and the novel top-down perspective of a satellite view is what makes this type of oblique imagery so powerful. And that ease of interpretation can be used in all kinds of communication. Presenting new information in the context of pre-existing knowledge is probably the best way to communicate unfamiliar ideas. In your own discipline, try to find the examples that connect the everyday to the exotic 
the known to the unknown and the tangible to the intangible. Thank you.